my throat's been like kind of <laughs> sore for the past like three days. I think it may be tonsillitis, but mm. all I know is that I have my hot cup of tea and um, I'm satisfied. Hi guys, so after my last video, I just said, you know what, let's make a third. <laughs> so today, I thought it would be fun if uh, we just uh, just do a, a regular makeup video. <laughs> you know how I do like my routine and what my routine consists of, and uh, just see how things go. So let's begin, shall we? So. What I do first is sort of moisturize my skin. I do moisturize my my skin with an aloe vera gel. Um, it does keep you know my skin tacky. I used to use it like as a primer before I went to sticking with like using primer. But I mean, either way, it works great. You know, I mean, my skin's hydrated. <laughs> primer, on the other hand, um, I normally use Elf primers. I think Elf has like the best primers like on the market when it comes to a drugstore. And I used to use the one that's like the mineral infused one. It's like a tall bottle. I'll put a picture somewhere here, <laughs> probably right here. But now I have uh, been really been using this primer for a while. This is the Matte Putty Primer. I really do like it. It does keep my skin matte and uh, yeah, and as, as you can tell, I really do like this. Normally I would take a palette knife and take some off of it, you know? But I don't have my palette knife with me, so I'm just gonna go straight in with my fingers. Plus this, this is very little product anyway. So I'm just gonna take my fingers, take about that much. And what I kind of do is just take it and kind of just swirl it around in my hand. And I kind of just pat it into the skin. Just pat it into the skin. And a little goes a long way with this. It really does. For foundation, I do have like a lot of foundations that I use uh, that I really like. Like I love the MAC foundation. I love the Morphe foundation. I love the Fenty Beauty foundation. These are like my top three like favorite foundations like ever. However, what I've been liking for the past few weeks is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer in the shade 09 Tan. Like it's a really good like match for me. And for a drugstore foundation, this really is worth the price for uh, the foundation. I think this is like, I think $10, I think. I think, I could be wrong. Also, this foundation is a very, very, very full coverage foundation. So like one pump of this would like literally cover your entire face almost. What I'm gonna do is take my mixing palette right here, shake the foundation up, and just put like one pump in there. Sometimes one and a half. Uh, it just depends on the mood. <laughs> it really does depend on the mood. Then I would take my beauty sponge, which I would recommend everyone when you do dampen your beauty sponge to kind of let it sit for at least 30 minutes to an hour at least. That way it's like truly damp and like it's it can, you know, it can work properly. That's how I, how I use it at least. Take my foundation take the beauty sponge, take the bottom of it. I would kind of just like stamp it into my face. Kind of just stamp it. Stamp it and then like blend it. You want to blend it like at least right here to the to the jawline, you know, because that's where you put contour. I don't really believe in like putting foundation all the way on the neck because your neck is a totally different color than your face. So when you're picking a foundation, the best swatch and match for you to like literally find the perfect shade of a foundation is literally to swatch it from your face and blend it out. That's what I would recommend. So once you blended out your foundation, we're then gonna go in with a concealer. Now I really like this concealer actually, which is another drugstore concealer from Milani. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer in the shade 155 Cool Sand. And I will say it's it's a really nice concealer. It really, really is. And I like the doe foot of it. This is what I would do first. I would kind of just put like dots right here from the corner of my eye to the outer corner of my eye. 
and then kind of put a little bit more product if I want to on those dots. Then I would take my beauty sponge and I would kind of just focus it right here and kind of blend sort of outward and inward onto the under eye area. Now I know you've seen like beauty gurus like do the whole dramatic like triangular kind of a thing. When we're talking about the under eyes and about you know concealer creasing and whatnot, you don't want to do that because that causes like a concealer to crease. You know, if you do like that dramatic like like highlighting there, you don't want to really do that, not really with everyday makeup. That's more so of a technique for the theater and for drag queens. So if we're wanna talk about everyday makeup, this would be the perfect like thing to do when it comes to your under eye concealer. Now, if you wanna highlight your cheekbones, like if you really, really wanna highlight your cheekbones, I will show you how to do that in just a minute. Now, when it comes to highlighting your cheekbones, on the other hand, it's a little bit different than highlighting under your eyes. So what I would do is take the concealer, go like right here on the bridge of my nose, so like right here on the nostril of the nose. Place the concealer like right there and just go like that, like halfway to your cheekbone. You don't want to go all the way because that's, that's too much product. So you wanna do it just right, about halfway there. And you can also connect, like do a little streak too. So like that. Take your beauty sponge and just blend it because makeup is meant to disperse. It's meant to um, disperse product. It's meant to like spread. When we're talking about highlighting the cheekbones, you're really just dispersing that product on your cheekbones to sort of get a highlight to your cheekbones. So, and try not to take the concealer that you have on the cheekbones all the way to the eye. That will also lead to like a cakey concealer. So just be sure of that, okay? Take the concealer again, and then I would like to highlight just on some pinpoints of my face. Like right here in my mustache area, because I do have some discoloration here. I would do like a cross kind of a thing on the cheek, on the chin. A line straight down the nose, and then a lot on the forehead. Kind of like my little orb. I call this like my little David Bowie orb when it comes to putting a concealer on the forehead, so. And then just blend it out. Then what I would like to do next is set the concealer from the under eye to the cheekbone everywhere where I put the highlight in. I'm gonna take my Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in the shade 30 Medium Deep and I'm gonna take some here. Then I would take my Morphe E48 brush, which is a nice like powder brush for like for you to get like under the eye and whatnot. Take some of this powder. And you only need like a little bit of this powder. This powder is like very full coverage. So you really don't want much. And then just set under the eye. Lightly set it though. You don't want to, again, go overboard with this concealer or excuse me, with this powder. Now that we have set the concealer with powder, we are then going to set the entire face. I am going to use Cody Airspun a loose face powder in the shade Rosy Beige to set my face. Now, I will say for this powder, this does cause a lot of flashback, so you don't need much of this powder. You just need like a little bit. So I'm gonna take my Morphe E41 brush, go into this powder, take off any excess of this powder, and just dust on this powder. You don't need to like bake or cook or anything like that. You just need to lightly dust this powder. You don't need much. Now, sometimes I would do this, sometimes I won't, but I'll take a foundation powder. This is the MAC Studio Fix uh, powder in the shade NW40. And I would take this brush, this is the Morphe E1 brush, and I would kind of just go over just the places where I, where it's not like the highlighting parts of my face and kind of just put a little bit of color like on my face. That way, in case of you know, um, flashback, 
you would have this powder like right here. Now that the base and highlight um, are down, we're then gonna go into contour. For contouring, I am gonna use the NYX Professional Makeup Highlight and Contour Pro Palette. It is a really nice drugstore like contouring palette. I would normally go for, well, essentially all of these shades, but I've recently been getting into this little darker shade right here. So I'm gonna take my Morphe M405 brush and I'm gonna dig into that dark shade right here. Just dig into it. Take off any excess. And where I contour, when you're contouring, it sort of depends on your face shape and how you want your face to appear. So for me at least, I like to take my contour from like right here, and I don't use much. Just kind of go like from right here, from above my ear. I kind of just stipple it on. You can swipe too, but I prefer to stipple. There's a difference between buffing and stippling. Stippling means that you're trying to make it seem like it's on the skin. You know, like it appears like it's on the skin, like it's your skin. Buffing is where you're literally just dispersing product. So there's a difference. And kind of blend it up a little bit too. Like blend it up. Don't ever blend down because that's just gonna make your face just look like it's downward. You know, you want to blend up. You wanna lift up your cheekbones. Now, when you're contouring, you don't necessarily want to go like all the way like down, you know, like down from like the corner of your mouth. Like you want to contour to like where the corner of your mouth is, but you don't want to like draw it all the way down there because that's just going to make it look unnatural. Try and just focus it like at least right here, at least to the mid cheekbone at least, at least there. But again, that's just me. That works for my face shape. Now, if you feel like your contour is too harsh, you can definitely take your powder um, brush and kind of just go over it. It's not going to take away the contour, but it is going to soften the contour. It is going to at least, you know, make the contour not as harsh. Then I'm going to contour the jawline, but that depends on you and how you contour your own jaw jawline. I like to contour right here at least, and then go from the back of the ear, like right here, to down here, and kind of connect them in a sense. I kind of like have a double chin in a sense, so what I would do, I kind of do like this old, this is like a Rihanna like makeup trick, but what she would do is kind of just draw a triangle on her chin. Now of course she used a cream, but I'm going to use powders, you can do this with powders if you want to. But I'm gonna like draw a triangle with this powder contour for my double chin at least. Draw that triangle. Now I'm gonna contour the forehead, but I don't contour my forehead like like typical beauty gurus, you know, they go like all the way around like that. I just kind of focus it from my head shape. I kind of just focus it more so like right here. Like more so right here to the hairline and up here, kind of like a, I guess you should say like a triangle in a sense. Now I'm gonna contour my nose. Now, contouring your nose is totally up to you. You know, you don't have to contour your nose, you know, because if you like your nose and you don't wanna change the shape of it, you don't have to. I kind of see contouring more as like a, like a decorative kind of step. You know, it's kind of like the star on a Christmas tree, you know, just put that little star on the Christmas tree it gets a little pizzazz. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is take my contouring shade and the Morphe E62 brush, which is a nice angular brush for nose contour. And I'm going to kind of focus it right here. And for nose contour in particular, you wanna swipe like down at least because that's the goal that we wanna do for, for nose contouring. I swear just focus straight down in a sense to make it look slimmer. And I like to put contour like right here on like, you know, on the brow, because to me it does give like a nice like elongated shape, especially when you put eyeshadow over it. So I'm kind of just creating that shape and drawing it with the powder contour. That's what I'm doing at least. But you can use whatever you want to use. You know, you can use creams, you can use powders. You can use whatever you want to like sort of draw on your contour. 
it's your preference and then I would just blend it out and only blend it out like swiping swiping it like straight down don't go up and down like that because you're gonna like disturb the product that's like on your face or like on your nose so just kind of just go straight down then to highlight on the bridge of the nose I'm gonna take this yellow powder highlight right here and I'm just gonna focus it like right here and go straight the bridge to at least right here to the sort of unibrow section of the brow for blush um I used to not wear blush you know because I thought okay blush would make me look like a clown and whatnot so now I got used to wearing it so for blush I'm gonna take the elf primer infused blush in the shade always rosy and this is a really nice blush, I will say. Especially for my skin tone, it's a really, really nice blush. So I'm gonna take my Morphe E4 brush, dip into the blush right here. Be careful, because this is a powdered blush, as you may see. And I'm just gonna like follow, not really from the apples of my cheeks, but sort of right here be behind my contour in a sense, like sort of right here. And again, you wanna stipple it. You don't want to go overboard with it and take off any excess with the back of your hand you know kind of follow your con your natural contour but nor more so follow your cheekbone in a sense now if you are kind of flat like right here kind of like i am a little bit you can put like a, a little bit of blush like right here but not too much just a little then what i would do with the blush is take some and I kind of just put some like right here on my temple. So I feel like it gives a nice color to, to the face at least, at least in my opinion it does. So, and I kind of put some like on the, like on my contouring area too to give some, some color, you know, on my forehead. And again, you want to stipple it. You want to stipple the blush. You don't want to go like, heavy-handed with the blush. Now for brows, it depends on what you like. You know, if you like pencils, if you like gels, if you like pomades, it just depends on your personal preference of how you like your brow. For brows today, I'm gonna use the NYX Professional Makeup Tame and Frame Tinted Brow Pomade, which is a really nice pomade. But first I'm going to sort of comb the brows in a sense. And I'm using my Morphe M158 brush. And this is in the shade black, by the way. Take your pomade. And what I would do, I like to start mid-brow. That's where I like to start my brows. It's kind of just start mid-brow. And just kind of create a shape, in a sense. Create a shape with the brow. And kind of follow your natural, like, tail and whatnot with this pomade. And for the brows also, I will cut them like sort of to create some sort of even shape in a sense. So I'm going to take my MAC uh, paint, Pro Longwear Paint Pot in the shade Land Low and I'm going to cut the brows with this. You can use concealer to like cut your brow, but personally I like to use an eye primer like this that has like a color that's like of a warmer tone, I guess you'd say. And it would, you know, it would sort of give like a highlight, like a brighter highlight under the brow in a sense. And I'm taking my Morphe M410 brush and I'm just kind of following where my brows are and where I, you know, created my brow shape. Then I would blend it down and that is how I cut my brow. I mean, do you see like a difference with it? Especially when I use the paint pot, this brings like a brighter sort of like under brow and this one's it's not dull it's just not as brightened you know it's not then for the eyes i am going to prime with the same primer the pro longwear paint pot from mac land low um and i'm just gonna dip in there three times and do like three dots take off any excess from the brush and just blend it in blend it in and it really is a nice primer. I really do like this. Actually, this is promoted as a cream eyeshadow, actually. But it really does work as a primer because it has some sort of like slip into it. And it works 
really well with eyeshadow. For eyeshadow, I think it just depends on what you want to do. You know, like how you want to do your eyes, what your typical eyeshadow is, you know. So I think it just depends on you and how you want to do your eyeshadow. I am going to use the Morphe X James Charles palette. I really do like this palette actually. I mean, I mean, come on. You have like literally an array of colors here. You have so many colors to pick from. It's, it's a good palette. I am going to do something uh, that's, that's like an optional thing you, you want to do. But this is what I'm gonna do, just so eyeshadow doesn't fall on my face. I use my True Complexion Loose Setting Powder from Black Radiance, really lovely black on brand. This, this is in the shade Banana. This type of banana powder, like it's translucent, even though it's a banana powder, and it really works well. It really does. And I'm gonna take the Morphe M438 brush. And what I'm going to do is not really bake, but what we're going to do is sort of create a barrier on the cheekbone, not under the eye, on the cheekbone. That way it can kind of guard us from like having fallout from like on the face and whatnot. I'm going to do like a slight, not really bake, but sort of like highlight right here on my nose contour. And then follow right here on the cheekbone. And you can, if you want, you can cut the cheekbone with this if you want to, with this powder. Now onto the eyeshadow. Now I was thinking for like an eye look, I was thinking of something a little bit more like mauve in a sense, like a mauve kind of like a, I don't know, so, sort of just, I guess you say monochromatic in a sense. So I'm gonna take my Morphe M573 brush and I think to start off with, I'm gonna start off with my transition shade. I think I'm gonna start off with this color right here, which is the shade Mary. And to start off like as a transition shade. So I like to start like right here above my crease in a sense, like right here. I'm gonna dip into this shade again. I will say that no eye shape is like the same because again, I'll say this again and again and again, no eye shape and no face structure is symmetrical with the same. We all have our like little imperfections. I mean, but, but that's okay. Imperfections are perfectly imperfect. Now that we have the transition down, we're then gonna go in with the crease area. So, I'm gonna take my Morphe M506 brush, which is a really, really nice like brush to get into detailed like corner of the crease, at least for my eye shape. And I'm going, gonna go in with something that's more of a medium tone kind of a shade, something that's a little bit, a little bit darker than Mary. I think I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is the shade Boutique. Dip in there and just, follow the crease, your natural crease, you know. So kind of like right here in a sense. And this does deepen your transition color. All it does is kind of, in my opinion, how I see like this color or like when you go in with a deeper color than your transition color, it kind of just contours your eye a little bit in a sense. Sort of gives like a nice contour smokiness to a sense. Now, if you feel like you went a little too far with your uh, crease color, you can definitely go in with your transition shade again. Dip in there. And kind of just follow your transition shade. You know, if you feel like you, you know, over blended and over smoked it in a sense, you know? I'm gonna go into the outer corner of my eye, right here, the outer V. I'm gonna put like a darker shade right here. So I think I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is the shade Benny. And I'm gonna take my Morphe M433 brush and I'm just kind of just focusing it right here. In a sense, right here in the outer V. Once I have this darker color like blended out, 
right here. I'm then going to go in with some shimmer right there. So I'm going to take my Morphe M224 brush, which is which is an older model. I'm going to take my MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus in the scent Cherry Blossom. Spray the brush a little bit. Take off any excess. And I'm I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is the shade Shook, and put that on my eye. I'm gonna put this right here on the lid. It gives like a nice, like monochromatic-ish kind of a thing. Like it gives like a pop of something, you know? And it really is a nice like color, a nice shimmer. For detailing purposes, I am going to take the brush where I had the shade Benny in and I'm kind of just going to blend it in, kind of give like some sort of a nice ombre effect in a sense. Also, you can do this with your crease shade. Go in with the shade Boutique and kind of blend in where you put the shimmer in to, the, to that color to kind of just again sort of blend it in in a sense kind of blend it in and make it seamless then i'm going to take my morphe e2 brush and just dust all that like that powder that we put on the face to sort of guard and highlight any places off the face then i'm going to take my morphe m431 brush which is this like tiny like pencil brush right here take my fix plus Spray it a couple of times. I think I'm going to go in with... I think I'm going to go in with this shade right here for the inner part of my eye, which is the shade Halloween. I think that kind of shade is going to bring some sort of like... Like a little bit of brightness, but like color to it. Because I would like do like a, like a bright like inner corner. But I don't want to do that. I want to do something that's going to like blend in with the shimmer in a sense. Take the shade Halloween with this wet brush right here and just apply that right here in the inner corner. Like you see how it kind of brightens but it gives a little bit of color payoff? Like that's what I like. I like that. I like to blend like inner corners like from my eye shape like in little semicircles in a sense. Not like harsh circles, but like little semicircles. And kind of pat too with it. Before I smoke out under the lash line right here with eyeshadow, I'm gonna go in with eyeliner first. So I'm gonna go with my Morphe M250-1 brush, which is a very thin brush right here, and the Inglot Gel Liner in the shade 77, which is a very black eyeliner. Take my brush product in here and I'm just going to put this in my waterline. I really like using gel eyeliners because I feel like you can you have more control with it and two I like using it because when I use a brush like this I feel like an artist. Using my Morphe M124 brush I am then going to go in with the shade Benny and smoke out under the eye. I'm then going to go in with the same gel liner and I'm going to go in with an angular brush. This is the Morphe M160-1-8 brush, which is a lovely, lovely eyeliner brush. I'm going to dig it there. I'm going to make a wing shape. Now, it just depends on your eye shape and how you like to do your wing eyeliner. But for me, I like to follow like right here to the waterline. So like... Right here, wing it out, and then I like to go from like right here to the midpoint of the wing. Now the one thing I've learned about winged eyeliner is that no wing is going to be the same. So just try and do your wings the best you can. Yeah, just do your best. You know, there shouldn't be any pressure for you to like have a perfect wing because no wing is going to be perfect. You just got to keep practicing. Keep practicing your wing. That's all you gotta do. I'm gonna take my Morphe M250-1 brush. I'm gonna dig into the liner again, and I'm gonna do my top eyeliner to sort of, I guess you'd say, 
to sort of uh, create some sort of definition. Well, not really definition, but a line right here. In the eye. Now that we got the eyeliner fixed, in a sense, to make it sort of even, <laughs> I am then going to go in with mascara. I'm going to take the Maybelline Last Sensational Mascara and I'm going to put this on my eyelashes. And I like this mascara because like it's thick but it's buildable. Like for me it's not so heavy. That's my opinion though of this mascara. Plus I like the wand. The wand's like triangular. So you can probably like get into like the really, really like inner corners of your lashes. Particularly I don't wear false lashes. I normally don't wear false lashes, but I'm practicing, you know, how to, you know, apply them and how to, you know, wear them for from my eyelids. I think it just depends on eyelid space and just depends on your personal preference too. Probably like for me if I were if I were to like wear an eyelash, it'd probably be something like a little baby lash. You know? Like just something something small. You know, nothing too crazy or too big. Like just a small lash. But for highlighter, I think I'm going to take this highlighter right here, this loose highlighter from Inglot. This is the Sparkling Dust Face Eyes Body Illuminator, which is in the shade FEB01. And it's a really nice like rosy gold kind of highlight. Like, oh my God, like look at this. That is blinding, that is sickening. I'm gonna take my Morphe M501 brush, take off. Some of that. Look at that. Look. Pixie dust. <laughs> I'm gonna put this highlighter like anywhere where light shows. So like right here in the opposite of my cheeks. But I don't want to go like overboard. Just a little. Because a little goes a long way with this highlighter. A little goes a long, long way with this highlighter. Put some on the chin, on the cupid's bow. Put some right here on the tip of the nose little bit right here in the bridge of the nose and I'm also going to put some right here on the forehead. For lips, I think I'm gonna do like mm, like a regular lipstick sort of sense, you know? Like I have this dramatic like mauve kind of dark eye and I think for lips I want to do something that's a little bit more, I guess you'd say more natural in a sense. So I'm gonna take my MAC Satin Lipstick in the shade Del Rio which is pretty close to my lip shade, and just apply it to the lips. Then the last thing to do is just set the face. I'm gonna use the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus in Cucumber. I really like this because it's like very calming on the skin in my opinion, and it just feels so refreshing. I feel like my skin is skin again, you know what I mean? So. Then I'm gonna let this dry, but I know a faster way to let this dry. And here is the final look. I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, <laughs> um, this is the third video. I'm surprised that I've made three videos, at least when it involves makeup. <laughs> Well, as I said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video um, and all the helpful tips and tricks and things that I do in my makeup routine. Hopefully they can apply to your routine as well. Who knows? I mean, who knows? I'm not, you know, I'm not your mother. I'm not going to force you, you know, how to do your makeup. So. Anyway, again guys, thank you so much for watching and um, I am going to leave down links to not only my Instagrams so you can like, you know, talk to me or like follow me, whatever you want to do. You know, it's your choice if you want to follow me or not or if you just want to talk to me. It doesn't matter. I love talking to anybody. So, <laughs> Also, I am going to be leaving links to um, 
to foundations that I truly, truly, truly do believe in. One of them is the Born This Way Foundation. I truly do believe in what they stand for and how they want to improve this world to be a kinder and better world. I'm also going to leave the Black Lives Matter donating link below as well if you want to donate to them as well, including um, the Amy Winehouse Foundation if you want to donate to them as well. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and um, who knows, maybe I'll make another video. Who knows, it'll be number four. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye.